Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about massive transfusion protocols. So knowing um, what an MTP is, that's another term, just abbreviation, MTP, massive transfusion protocols, it is usually initiated when a patient needs 10 units of packed RBCs in a 24-hour period or five units of packed RBCs in one hour. Some hospitals will activate an MPT, an MTP when four components of blood products are administered within 30 minutes. Remember that when we give one unit of blood, one unit of packed red blood cells, we usually do this in about two hours. Four would be the max, but in about two hours. Um, when somebody needs 10 or more in a 24-hour period, that's when you have to take other precautions. So why would somebody need MTP? Well, obviously trauma would be a big cause. Think of somebody that's in a motor vehicle accident and um, has had pretty significant trauma and they are bleeding everywhere. Or somebody who is in hypovolemic shock because of hemorrhage. Um somebody who's had a GI bleed or a ruptured aortic aneurysm. I recently had a patient that came in with a pretty significant GI bleed and her hemoglobin was four. Remember that normal hemoglobins usually are between 12 and 16. Again, these can vary depending on the book and whether it's a male or female, but that's a pretty average number. Hers was four. So you know that her organs were not perf uh, getting the perfusion that they needed. Um, she had altered LOC. She was in hypovolemic shock because she was bleeding. So she needed, um, we needed to get as much blood in her, not as quickly as you would think, but because she was still okay, he kind of hemodynamically stable. Um, another example of indications would be surgery. Cabbage, patients who have come out and after open heart surgery, they're at high risk for bleeding. So we have to be ready to not to activate a, we call it a code heart at the hospital when it's a bypass patient that's bleeding and we need to give, get as much blood in them as possible or as quickly as possible. So these are some of the indications. Again, it would be just a situation where you need to rapidly replace blood products um, in order to perfuse vital organs. So, of course, you typically activate a protocol. And um, you the first thing you would do when you know that you need it, if you have a patient with a hemoglobin of 2 and they are hemodynamically unstable, we call the lab. Remember that usually you get a type and screen to determine the patient's blood type and um, to make sure that it's compatible with the blood they're going to send you. When Well, in an MTP, you usually don't have that time. So O negative blood is the blood that they usually try to send up. And um, you call the lab and the lab starts bringing it up as you go so that you can quickly infuse this into people. Um, so because patients can, are usually actively bleeding and they're hemorrhaging, this can cause coagulopathies, meaning um, they're bleeding. Okay, so their blood is not clotting like they should. So they're gonna be bleeding out. So one thing with MTPs is that the more blood you give them, the more they can potentially bleed. So a lot of the times they get plasma along with the blood that they're going to that they're going to need. Um you have to be able to monitor for electrolyte abnormalities. Um people who get massive blood transfusions are at big complications for having potassium problems and calcium. Usually they can become hypocalcemic or hypo, hyperkalemic. So you have got to watch these. And remember that calcium has clotting factors in it and stuff to make us help clot up. So another reason why we start to bleed, another reason why we need plasma. And so you have got to watch electrolytes when somebody is having an MTP and hypothermia. Remember that blood is cold. Um, when they keep it down in the lab, they keep it in the freezer. So when you don't have time for them to warm it up, usually you get it cold. There are some machines that you can warm it up really quickly. And as you're giving it to patient, patients, it tries to warm up. Um, but depending on how fast you're giving it, 
you can cause some hypothermia. So you got to watch out for that. So again, as soon as um, you know that you need blood and you've activated it and the blood bank is bringing it to you, a lot of hospitals will do either a one to one ratio or a two to two ratio, um, meaning for every red packed red blood cell that they give, you got to give some plasma. Um, if you give two packed red blood cells, two units of packed red blood cells, then you would give um, two units of plasma. Or if you do two units of packed red blood cells, um, then you can do one unit of plasma. Again, it just depends on the facility. The point is you give this so that they don't bleed out on you. And then you obviously have to watch those electrolytes and you uh, fix them or replace them as needed. So to recap on this little lesson regarding massive blood transfusion protocols, you have to quickly identify the patients that need it. If you know somebody has a hemoglobin of one or two and they are hemodynamically unstable and they're bleeding, we need to get as much blood in them as quickly as possible so you activate it. Make sure that you understand depending on your facility, you're gonna give blood or packed RBCs and you're usually gonna give plasma to go along with it to prevent them from bleeding. And then of course you monitor labs. Um, you wanna monitor your potassium, your calcium to make sure that they're okay. And you monitor for hypothermia. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.